So it's a thermal mod time here for the Cube i7 book that I have. If you've seen my review, you would have seen that it got up to 97 degrees. And the reason behind that is, if you have a look at photos that are on the website techtablets.com we have up there, uh, there is actually no thermal pad between the aluminium heat spreader they have on there and the rear housing. So none of that heat's being transferred to the rear of it, even though it does get really hot. So what I'm gonna do here is just open the tablet up here and see if I can just improve things probably just put a large thermal pad on there maybe add a little bit of copper copper like I've done in the past so before I start doing this mod I just want to go over a couple of things that if you haven't done this kind of thing before then please don't attempt this if you have no experience with this as well and also I'm not responsible if you end up somehow cracking your screen opening it or you make a big mess of it or you damage the tablet in any kind of way so you do all of this at your own risk So what I found with these cubes, just like the i7 book, that the easiest place to start to open them up is just along the top here where the antenna is, because it's plastic against plastic. It's a little more flexible than trying to open it on the corners, which is probably the hardest part. So you can use either a guitar pick. I like to use a credit card, or here's just like a SIM card, because it's a little bit softer, the plastic, and it's a little bit more forgiving when going up against other plastic. So I started it off just along here, along the edge, and just get in there and just go along popping the little clips in there. Be careful not to break anything. Now the hardest part is just around the corners and you've also got to be very careful around where the speakers are because there's a little grill in there too that we don't want to damage. So you just go around there popping all that open and then you should be able to pry the case off. Just take your time, go around very slowly and try not to damage anything. You can hear it's going to make a few clicking noises, it's going to make um, some noise there that sounds like you're breaking something but that's just the, the clips there breaking free. Now I found it was easier to go down each side here and then because the bottom has the pogo 10 pin pogo ports on there it's a little harder to get off so then you can just kind of just slide the the back out the back plate out and then pull it down from the, the bottom there because it's a little harder there and there we go so that has come off let's have a look so I can see a bit of a huge copper plate on the back there which is really good that's approximately looks like uh, one millimeter or actually half a millimeter and there we go you can see no thermal pad so that it's kind of crazy they haven't put that on there so there's nothing to transfer that heat over why they might have done this is maybe to keep some of the what's called like the the skin temperature down so the outer casing doesn't get too hot so have a look now at the motherboard here in some detail so you can see there's the obviously the pogo port there there's some weights in the bottom here that's for the magnets for the keyboard to dock into and there is the SSD and we can see the Intel wireless and this is just a thin aluminium they've got on there there'll probably be just a thermal pad underneath there so I already I can see loads of room for improvement and right there on the side is the speakers and the two battery cells there which are apparently you can see right there marked 4,500 milliamp hours, so all up 9,000. And there's just a, a couple of ports down here, connectors. There's no spear connector there for a modem, so obviously no plans for a modem version. Although I can see there is one ribbon cable uh, Lego kind of connector there, but nothing's going to that, so I don't know what that purpose is of that for. And you see that uh, there are dual antennas. There's one antenna at the top here and then the other one just along there. So upgrading the M2 SSD should be quite easy. It's a 22mm by 42mm one. So all you need to do is unscrew that screw there, slot it out. But I recommend taking a Windows image backup first so you can restore that to your new larger drive. You can go right up to uh, 512 gigabytes, I think is the maximum size you can get. But most people normally go and get the uh, 256 or 128 because 64 gigabytes for myself personally really isn't cutting it. So before we start to do anything, make sure you touch the outer housing of, for example, a tower PC to unearth yourself. Don't go and touch your fluffy cat or your dog and get all static electricity and go touching around here with your fingers because then you will do some damage and short something out. The f best thing to do is to remove the battery plug right here on the side. Now it's a little tough to get out, I think. I'm going to probably have to pull that off 
out of camera. Okay, so disconnecting the battery there was a little harder than I expected, but there's a, a board along here that can you can use to help flex it up when you pull that out. Just be careful you don't damage any of the cables that go into that, of course. So there's a couple of things we can do. What I've done before on the other core M's that I've done this mod on, for example, the QBi9, all I did is put a a 20 millimeter by 20 minute copper shim on top between the aluminium here and the, the core M die below. So that's 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters and the thickness is one millimeter more or less you can do that now if you want a quick and easy fix you could probably just go and slap on a huge thermal pad so you can buy this all of these parts i'm showing you here you can get off ebay and most electronic shops to be able to source this stuff for you so i've got a nice big huge thermal pad here that's one millimeter thick i don't know whether that's going to be thick enough to be honest i want a nice amount of contact on the rare copper foil that they have put on the back of it. So something like that you can put on there, but obviously it doesn't need to be that big. So I do have also a two millimeter one here, and you could cut that to size. Look, that's actually gonna be quite a good size there. So what I could do, ideally, just chop that along here to that to the dimensions of this, and, and then that could be it. That'll probably be enough to lower temperatures, I would say, maybe even a good 10 degrees or so. So people want to know the dimensions here of this. So I'll just measure that. So this is uh, 60 millimeters. And have a look and see how tall it is. Just don't want to touch anything to cause any damage. And then 105 millimeters in length there. And the spacing of the screws where the holes are, are just more or less in the middle there so that is okay that's telling me 43 so about 43 there 44 43 millimeters each side and the gap between them sorry i've got a tripod here so it's a little awkward for me to measure this and that is a 20 21 probably be 20 i'm saying 21 actually no about 22 millimeters along there. So that's for someone that makes wants to make their own, uh, for example, own copper plate on it. I do have a piece of copper. Again, I sourced this from eBay. A, a nice copper plate here that is one millimeter thick. So I could actually fabricate something or drill the holes out so I can have that screwed on top. Cut that down here. And the thing I'd be concerned about is this shorting out components below. You've got to be really careful about that. So ideally you want to put an anti, well, an, an insulating tape along the top here, something that's not going to cause any shorts. So you can have at least that screw down and not worry about that. And this would transfer a lot of heat away. And I, I imagine with this, you could probably lower temperatures about 20 degrees or so. That plus a thermal pad and then transferring with all you need to do here. So I'm going to just take this off now and have a quick look and see what I'm going to do for my own unit. So I just removed these four screws. I'm so puzzled as why did Cube not put thermal pad on this? On the top, I mean they put a thermal pad on the Cube i9 so why didn't they do it here and that that's probably why this is getting up to 97 degrees if they put a thermal pad on there like they did in previous models normally they put the thermal pad right in the space here that's straight above where the core is the core m then we wouldn't be getting those kind of temperatures anyway at least it can be improved so let's pull this up okay that's got like a protection on the back of it to stop any shorting and I've just put a huge thermal pad on there, which looks to be about a millimeter thick. You can see the RAM chips right there. Those RAM chips are Samsung. Samsung ones there. Sorry, I'll get the camera to focus. There we go. And actually there is space here. See that they could probably actually fit a second drive in there or put the modem in there. That's if they were going to release a 4G or 3G version. 
So I'm going to peel this off, just give it a quick clean and think about what I'm going to do, whether I'm just going to opt to put one of these on, I think might be the best solution. Um, I don't really want to go to all the lengths of having to fabricate or create a huge copper plate, although that would give the greatest benefit, of course, and really reduce temperatures. And one thing I was thinking, if you were going to make your own huge copper plate here, you could probably do an, something like this. So you could cut this to the dimensions, drill the holes, and what I think would be easier would be probably just to sand this right down so it's nice and rough, use some thermal adhesive, and then glue on a, a one a one millimeter thick plate there and that will sit on top of the CPU and then the screws on the other sides there will help hold that down but of course we want to make sure we do have some insulation insulating tape on top of this but something that's going to withstand of course up to around about 80 degrees or 90 degrees however hot it's going to get so you, you, make, you have to make sure you use the correct tape there just any old tape won't do because that could disintegrate and you could have a lots of trouble with it uh, mounting on there or all sorts of problems and then eventually cause a short all right, so I decided that I'm gonna crudely fabricate my own copper plate here, and I've just drilled holes similar to that to the mounting screws there to mount this back on there, and I have just sanded this and scratched it up. And what I'm gonna do is get the 20 by 21 millimeter thick copper plate, and I'm gonna use some thermal adhesive and put it on like that, and then screw all of this on top. Now, of course, I'm worried about shorts on this. I thought you can actually, I think, pull the material off this, and, maybe be able to stick that on the back of the copper plate. But another idea I had is using my thinnest thermal pad here, just cover the whole thing on thermal pad, apart from this square area, of course, that's gonna have contact with the die. Um, speaking of which, the die that I did actually clean that right here, you can see I've just cleaned it up. I did notice that the thermal pad they used is perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with it, I've just got it right here. But it was actually burning a little bit on one side there, so, and not really good to see. I'm not too sure if that die below is the GPU, I think the dual core, or that's the dual core there, those, that one there, and then the GPU at the top. But it's showing signs that it was actually getting really hot there because I had to use a lot of um, uh, alcohol and uh, remover to get rid of that. So I'll put the one millimeter thermal pad over the top here, and I'm just gonna use a knife just to cut around to take off the thermal pad, of course, on top of where that's gonna have contact with the CPU. I'm gonna put some thermal paste on top of that. Okay, so now I have my very, really rough copper plate here and on the back there, you can see that's where it's gonna have contact. I just cut some little holes there so the screws can go through nice and easy. Now I'm gonna put some thermal paste on. I'm going to use some um, MX4. Honestly, it's not gonna really matter what you use. Any thermal paste will be fine because this isn't your desktop i7 that you're overclocking or anything to 4.7 gigahertz. No, it's nothing like that, but this should do the job. So I'm gonna go apply some of that off camera because this comes out so easy. Last time I did it on camera or live on the camera, it just I made a huge mess of it and used too much thermal paste. Okay, so another really crap paste job there. I put too much on again. It just comes out so easy, it just flows out. Anyway, I'm not really too fussy with this because I think that that should be fine, okay? Maybe there's gonna be a little bit overflow, but that overflow should just sit in those little grooves either side. I don't think it's gonna cause any problems. Okay, so that did not go well at all. And the reason is because the screws, they don't sit flush in there. Hang on, I'll get the camera to focus on that. And that was a big problem for me because there's not enough thread that is actually gonna reach in there. And the other thing too, is that some of the components here are causing it to not sit down low enough that I would like. So you can see what I have, you can see that it's pressure, put pressure on here. So maybe I'm gonna to have to go around and just cut little holes there in the thermal pad. I don't think putting the thermal pad on the inside is a good idea. I may have to scrap this all together and just go with a 20 by 20 millimeter copper shim. All right, this is turning into a mission of a mod, but hopefully now I should be able to screw it on. You can see the threads are there and any other components like the RAM and things with my one millimeter thermal pad could actually be too thick. So I think using the thermal pad is a big headache, a big problem. And you're probably better off just using just the copper shim and not going my method. This is turning into a nightmare. I'm gonna see if I can mount it now. All right, so in the end I had to remove the thermal 
pad that I put underneath. It's just too thick. It's not going to work. You probably have to use only half a millimeter. Uh, so what I did is put some insulation tape all underneath it and screwed it on. Sorry I didn't show you that because I, I was having a bit of a t hell of a time actually to get it on there properly. And this video isn't really going as planned. So now I'm going to put the two millimeter thick thermal pad on top of the whole copper there I've got. So it's a huge amount of space there. I'm just hoping that it's not going to be uh, too thick here. If it's too thick, then I'm have to going to going to have to reduce that just to the one millimeter pad because if that's too thick, it's going to apply pressure, which could end up applying pressure onto the screen on the other side, or I won't be able to close the. I won't be able to put the backing on it because the backing's got the copper on the back, and that should be able to transfer a really good amount of heat through there. Okay, so just applying that two millimeter thick thermal pad, and now I will put the rear case back on and hopefully it's going to power up that I haven't shorted anything out from static. So when you put it back it's best to start with the pogo pin end first and make sure you have the volume buttons placed in there and you put the ca cable back in for the power. So I'm going to try and now do this put it back together hopefully it will clip back in because my thermal pad is quite large. Flip this around slot it in and keeping this down so the volume buttons don't come out of place there which they've just come out of place for me okay so that didn't go too well it's too thick my thermal pad as I thought it might be and you can see where it left an impression right here the contact area but along this side is quite thin so I either need to move the pad down and try again but I think what I'll do is I will just use what I have left of a one millimeter pad that I first tried to put underneath it and just put that along here somewhere right in the middle. Okay, this is my last attempt. I'm gonna put it in the middle here. This is now a one millimeter thermal pad. It's hot, I'm tired, and this is dragging on too long. All right, so it all went back together okay. And I've just been looping, or just did uh, three tests of 3D Mark 11 just to get it as hot as possible. And it's still getting quite warm on the back here, so I'll just quickly check the temperatures with my infrared thermal probe. Uh, so it's getting up to 40, 40 degrees there. So a little cooler to the touch, but the more you run it, the more you keep looping it, then the heat will start to build up. But that actually seems a little bit lower than what it was stock. So the most important thing here is how did that improve the temperatures? I just wanted to add that what I did here is I've just added a boost to the uh, power max. I set that to 12 watts and the short power max to 20. Now it will never reach that kind of wattage. And here are the temperatures. So maximum temperature now, 70, 69 degrees there. So that is a huge improvement from 97. Massive one. So I'll give you a closer look there. So 69 degrees. It is performing really well too because have a look at this 3D Mark score that I managed to get. And that is up from, there's the score I got with this, the stock setup, the stock thermals. Which is a really good score anyway for a Core M3. And now that is up approximately, what would that be, about 25% in Improvement and performance, you see the physics score, the graphics score, that has gone right up. So not a bad result there. Um, it was a bit of a headache, and sorry about how long this video has dragged out to be. I'm quite tired, and it turned out to be a little bit of a nightmare. But to be honest, I think you could probably get some good results just putting a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter, one millimeter thick copper shim in between the 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 die and then the heat shielding on there. So if you do that and then put a thermal pad on top, a one millimeter or two millimeter thermal pad on top of that, then you should be fine. That'll probably give you results very similar to this. Maybe it might get up to about 74 degrees or something like that, but it's still a huge improvement. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hopefully I will catch you back in the channel soon with more up and coming videos.